Okay, hi, Shelly here, and today I um, have decided to try a video with my glasses. Yeah, I don't know how they look, but whatever. Um, today I am with a different video, which is basically about why was I missing and what happened um, to me and my experience at two hospitals. <laughs> In two weeks, which is a lot, a lot. Um, basically, but before I say that, I kind of decided to enjoy my days and took a little walk to the closest shopping mall and I got this lipstick and that mascara, which is blue, but I don't think you can see it. It's just blue and I know I don't wear a concealer and I look creepy but I don't care <laughs> and and that lipstick and um, that is by Caroline and they are I got from my guidance that they don't do animal treatments that they really don't do and that they treat their employees right so they're not a mineral company if you do know of a mineral makeup company that treats their workers employees correctly and that they don't do animal uh, experiments please write their name in the comments if you don't that intuitively um, please write their name in the comments because I did not find any I received from my intuition that either that the company was not treating their employees correctly that was really a shame because mineral makeup is so nice and I'd love to buy some for myself um, so yeah, I don't know why do I feel like wearing makeup, um, no idea, it happens every once in a while, but I think the kind of routine where I don't necessitate like wearing actual like foundation or concealer and I just put on what feels natural to me, I think that helps a lot. Um, so that's my makeup story. <laughs> I just couldn't wait. I felt like buying uh, makeup. And they, if you get that on the site, then they are even cheaper. But they, I, I, I just couldn't wait. Um, it was spontaneous. So I had a lovely evening. And so without further ado, what happened to me? Why wasn't I posting videos? What's going on? Well, about... Two weeks ago, uh, it was Rosh Hashanah, which is my favorite uh, Jewish holiday because it is all about healthy food and abundance and New Year's resolutions and saying forgiveness to the people that you know you may have hurt during New Year. It's very humble holiday. I really like the energy around it, and yeah, I, I just love this holiday. Most Jewish holidays are like either really unhealthy food that makes you feel bad or celebrating a massacre or something like that like even Passover which is kind of good it's like liberation then it's a whole week where you cannot eat bread but you can eat like matzot which is annoying <laughs> to say as a child I loved it but as an adult I am like no this is not something that I can digest correctly um, but Rosh Hashanah is like my favorite holiday. Anyhow, I got to eat with my mama, um, but a couple of days before that, I guess I was doing something intensive in the energy work, and me and the energy worker that I've worked with opened a portal, and I guess that portal was not so profoundly protected, and it's because we were doing like mass ancestral healing, which means you work with mass consciousness, and then it's more difficult to protect the space. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so tip to you if you do healing cord release with mass consciousness, like um, like peoples, uh, or try to bring a lot of uh, a large group into a cord release ceremony or a uh, soul retrieval ceremony. 
it's more difficult to protect the space because you know God allows or the creation allows for many things to happen um, and that was a portal that was open and allowed certain energies to come in that were um, <laughs> not uh, uh, not energies that I could contain and I went through a psychic attack um, and in conventional medicine you don't have this word called psychic attack what you do have is psychotic seizure so I was trying to get help and I said well let's go to hospital uh, and I did I was convinced that I was going to die um, and not in a happy way and I was trying to say goodbye to as many loved ones as, as I could so because I said okay what people regret saying most when they die is that they love people and they appreciate people so I wanted to say that and it's something that I've been through in, in 2019 in a, in a I cannot say harsher way, it was a prolonged way, but it was whatever, <laughs> it was a big whatever. I did not know uh, what I know about intuition nowadays, and then I just thought my intuition failed me, um, but that's just the way it was back then. Um, is that correct that I just did not have the tools that I have today? Yes. Um, and yeah, and, and I was going through something that was like a replay of that, but in a different way, like I could get the chance to do things differently and so on and so forth. And when I got to hospital, I was not going to the ER as I'm used to, but I was going to uh, like a closed um, department and there was because of COVID and and because of my state that it was it took so long to hospital there was a really heavy Saturnian thing like it took so long to hospitalize me I was happy that I got to eat with my mom and then she brought me to the hospital and I was being told by my guidance that I did not go through psycho what what the conventional medicine calls psychotic seizure is that correct Yes, uh, and that's why I, even though I went for psychic attack, I was able to communicate. But then the doctor asked so many questions because they were trying to understand what is going on with me. And they said, I have to ask all these questions. But it, when you are going to psychic attack, it basically like gives ideas and gives all kinds of power to entities that you don't want to give the power over and I was trying to somehow manage this situation my poor mama did not get anything of what was going on um, and I was hospitalized and it was really scary like the, there was real fear that I would lose power over my behavior or over what I do or something like that it was really like trying to regain the power over my own body and stay in my body and so it's like it was it was like a portal that I could opt out but I opted in is that correct yes like I could really opt out of life at that point uh, but I opted in like I wanted to stay is that correct yes um, and I chose to stay and that happened to me also in 2019 where uh, I literally someone who has helped me energetically said you chose to stay a couple of times so it was like like there were a couple of portals I know energetically that I'm having I'm having intense transits to my chart like I knew that I already prepared my best friend that um, that that's the state and then something like that is can happen and we'll just try to live and see how can we do it you know how to live <laughs> in a nice way um so the crew was very um like they were very nice they were very they were trying to make you feel good um they were trying to get you to trust even though it's not the easiest 
um, in these circumstances. And yeah, they were, they were just really trying to be to do the best for you. And in the clothes department, there are no more uh, tying people. Like in the past, they used to tie people if they would revolt because there are many people who went through, for example, <sighs> violence. And then they can have like a trigger and then they can be violent themselves because in their minds they're trying to let go they're trying to break free of what happened to them uh, so in the past they would tie people up but now they don't do it anymore uh, at where I was hospitalized yes uh, which is one of the best hospitals like uh, by chance it's not I'm I don't have any special money or anything like that absolutely not it's just where I live which is the capital of the Negev um, and they, they do have a room where they restrain people and it's like it has um, it has like it, it's like puffed up so that if people hit the wall or they have a nervous breakdown or something like that they don't wound themselves and they can somehow get their anger out uh, although it is not something that I, I, I didn't get to feel that I did not interview the, the crew so this is only my impression uh, but I did not get to feel that the crew understand that these people need to let this anger and to let this energy out so that they can relax and so um, it is still like like uh, saying they would say to people like I don't want to exert violence like don't make me exert violence is something that we don't want to exert power over you please calm down and so on and so forth but they they don't have the the notion that these people need a place where they can let all the energy out of the body and really hit the walls or break or something like that that that, that helps the energy go out of the body uh, I didn't get that they that they know that or maybe they do know that and there's like other other times to do that that I'm not aware of um, all in all I felt that what I was doing by my guidance like the guidance helped me uh, to wear off the psychic attack uh, more than the pills that were given to me is that correct yes but in my mind I thought maybe I will get a pill that will get, help me wear off this psychic thingy and <laughs> you know maybe I do have like maybe this is psychic attack but in conventional medicine this is what they call psychosis so and, and, and then if they give me a pill then I will feel better uh, but I was told that this is not psychosis is, is that correct that the psychic attack is not psychosis yes uh, I'm afraid to ask what is psychosis to be honest I I, I have <laughs> I don't I want to maintain my own health and well-being uh, I maybe in a future time where I feel more uh, healthy and stable then I can do that and I can ask these questions and see what do I get from my guidance um, but th there is such a thing as psychosis right no okay so what people call psychosis is indeed psychic attack yes Okay, that's interesting, um, but at that time where I was given like a pill, then I thought that I'm okay with the pill, and it seemed okay, and I was hoping that maybe I could take this pill, because for me, for many, many years, I'm dealing with trauma, but who knew what is CPTSD, who knows what is complex post-traumatic stress disorder, which I'm fortunately in a very good stage of recovery from. Um, who knew what is that? You know, what people knew, it was bipolar, it was borderline, it was, you know, either a personality disorder or a mood disorder, and they tried to help with whatever, you know, tools they had. Uh, and we know that the DSM includes diagnoses that are not, <laughs> not with us, <laughs> that are, uh, because it's a conglomerate of politics and genuine desire to help people. So, it's both like, you know, the, the understanding that there is power in defining someone as not normal, and the understanding that there is genuine desire to help people who deal with mental crisis or deal with mental disorders or whatever. 
So it's both. Just like with filmmaking, when I studied filmmaking, it was like, it's both an understanding that a movie costs a lot of money to make and it has to be commercial and the real genuine desire to make art that whatever creators are dealing with. So I'd say that would be the that that would be the uh, medical like dilemma and dissonance that people have to hold when they are doing psychiatry. Um, I did feel that most of the people there were genuinely wanting to help. Like, I'm not saying that there weren't power trips, but most of the people that I ran into in psychiatry and in the medical team, fortunately in my life, in my experience, they genuinely wanted to help. They genuinely cared. They genuinely um, desired you to feel good. So it's not like a big pharma or what not. They, they genuinely believe in what they do, even if they may or may not do it the most correctly for all people. So for me, I tend to be more sensitive to the side effects of pills. I'm not the only one. There's like a revolving door in the ER where in, in the mental hospitals of people who take pills, cannot deal with the side effects anymore, stop taking the pills, have a crisis, go to the ER, then they need more pills and blah, 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 blah. And this is why the psychiatrist from their point of view, they're like, they're really wanting you to take the pills. So they're like, please take low number of pills so you won't have to take high number of pills later. This is what they know. This is what they know, this is what they see, and this is not because they are not educated or they don't care or they're, you know, in cooperation with the big pharma or no, just just the logic, that's what they see. Um, but the inner experience that I had was like, oh, completely different things helped me and I was, from my own will, I was trying to see maybe there is a pill that can help me, maybe there is a pill that I can take that, you know, that I won't have to deal with psychic attack. <laughs> Maybe there is something that can help me with that. Um, because I did not have the tools that I have with intuition now. And even now I'm just learning and growing and receiving like new insights and so on. Um, and no, I do not attempt to, to treat people. Like this is not what I attempt to treat. I'm a holistic health practitioner. This is not like I attempt to replace psychiatry or something like that. It's not... That's not, you know, what I do. <laughs> um, it doesn't mean that I cannot help and assist people, but I'm not instead of anything that they are doing. I'm in no point or position. I, I did not study psychiatry for that many years. It's true that I do know a lot because I taught myself about my own thingy and I try to understand what, what do I have and how can I help myself and so on, but I, there's a difference between studying yourself and studying to be a psychiatrist. Um, so, yeah, it was interesting to see to go to a department of people that did not, that did not know me, because I I was used to the ER and the ER and they, it was like they they used to they all sometimes even used the medical jargon with me because they knew that I know, um, and it. Uh, and it was interesting to, to see people who do not know me at all um, and do not know my background and do not know my knowledge or whatever. Um, it is very stressful to be in a place where it's closed and you cannot have visits because of the COVID. You could not have visits. Um, very intense. I got a lot of, and, I, and we could not have cell phones. Like, we had a phone, but it was so, like, you couldn't hear very well. <laughs> really interesting. And it was not even a Mercury retrograde. So, um, really interesting. Um, and the people ourselves are just people that, you know, come to heal. Uh, there are people going through crises. I cannot say about the people much because I want to keep their privacy. Um, what else? So the main thing that actually helped me was actually the practices that I got from my guidance and to be in a place where 
I don't have to worry like about my food or whatnot. I mean, I did ask the guidance like what can I eat, what this, what that, and they led me like to the best options that I had within what was. The food was tasty, which is not a given. Um, and yeah, that was that was the thing. Um, there is, I could talk about my inner voice and my intuition, and they called it like encapsulation, which is an interesting term. Like when when I stop for, from their perspective, hearing voices, and then I got to hear like my inner voice. This is how I portray that to them. This is my guidance because you know it's the way. Like if they said like uh, if I speak with creation and they say. Oh, does God, like, tell you that you are good? Does they approve of you? Do they, you know, they try to see, if, like, is there a pathology? Is God, like, are you being, like, absurd or something like that? Um, which actually is not necessarily something bad because God can be, like, or a creation or a voice can be, like, very comforting or they can give you what you actually need. If it's your guys, they can give you, like, an assur reassurance or whatnot, but from the medical perspective they were like calling it encapsulation where I did not hear voices that disturb me anymore but I heard voices that support me and like my inner voice then they call it encapsulation like the it's like the, the they see it as this the psychotic um, voices get into like encapsulation and then like the patient sort of copes with that which is actually beautiful it's not a given that they can accept it that the person hears voices and may have a certain pathology but it's not something that requires you know treatment right now it's not something that requires further intervention from their perspective so it was interesting to see how would a medical person who has nothing to do with spirituality, with channeling, with mediumship, with whatnot, um, see these phenomena? Although we know in science that people who channel they have different brain frequencies and something happens neurologically there, um, but they were looking, you know, how can we help the patient who hears, you know, voices or something that disturbs them, and how can we help the patient? cope with whatever they are dealing with right now. Uh, so that was really nice. Uh, they did not mention the trauma and here I say that it may be because um, one of the psychiatrists asked me like uh, do you feel like you're being raped or something like that and she was just trying to be understanding towards me and I told her when you say that it's something that is very triggering, so please don't don't ask such questions or don't ask about details. And she said, okay, I will take that into account. Um, so they're not trauma informed in any like the, even if they are trauma informed, they're not trauma informed in a way that is actually viable to treat patients. And uh, I'm saying that not as criticism of them, but just like that that's the state of you know my experience. Uh, but it was not, she was not doing, coming from a mean place or something. She was really trying to help and really trying to be humane. And she's, she also knew how to take criticism, which is also not a given. Uh, and it can be that w in my release like letter, they did not mention CPTSD or not mention the trauma because maybe she didn't want to trigger me. Maybe because I told her, don't talk about this. So maybe that was the reason. Because I am, like, it, it's known that I deal with CPTSD. Uh, I think it is still not in the DSM. Um, and what they did write is a schizoaffective disorder. Schizoaffective is not schizophrenia. It's like, like an in-between schizophrenia and manic depression or something like that. Uh, so that's like the, the way um, conventional medicine would see a psychic attack. Like it's a schizoaffective uh, disorder like the person had a psychotic, psychotic seizure or psychotic episode um, which I don't I don't condone like I, I, I don't I don't uh, sorry I don't um, I don't think it's necessarily bad to see it in this way the only thing different is that to understand psychic attack 
and what actually helps um, is to come to alignment with your inner voice and not tr to try to eliminate the voices that is something that I guess was missing that is something that could say you know like the um, teaching people how to ask for things like say claim their power ask you know I don't want the voice to be this denouncing or I don't want the experience to be like that I want a pleasant experience uh, and say and, and see that if a, a something is scary or something like that then this is not the voice of intuition intuition is always empowering it's always calming uh, unless it's like I said trying to get you to a place where you're like gets you to sort of like face what you think is the worst case scenario and then sort of tells you like no 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 you just have, you have to do this 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 and that so eventually it will always be calming and reassuring uh, and it will give you it will not give you wrong data but it will give you uh, an empowering message as to what is need to be done um, anyhow so I think that is something that could contribute in addition to like conventional treatment. I know that there are people who do take pills and are feel like their life is saved by that and that I and I am absolutely do not come against that. Um, on the contrary, I think it <laughs> it would be lovely if there could be like a pill that could help you know, discern or ventilate or cope with, you know, pressure and kind of help you, aid you to go back to yourself and see things in a lovelier way. I think that could be great. It could be a great assistance to intuition development. Um, and now we get to the part where I was, you know, I got out of hospital. I already got another menstruation in hospital and uh, it was like the second that month and I was beginning to get I, and I got the third I got the second one and I was at home like I was almost going to get the third one and I stopped the pills fortunately I could stop the pills quite easily because it was a dosage where I could come off it which would scare the doctors immensely but for me it was not not a choice again I had to stop the pills um, and I did not suspect the pills at first because I got two vaccinations and since the vaccinations my I was one of the people who for whom the menstruation got disturbed and I would get like twice a month or something like that um, so I, I thought okay that must be because of that still which is another topic I in, I'm in Israel and we did the Pfizer I did the Pfizer one um, which I don't regret doing, but I also I am still trying to get, I hope my menstruation this time comes on time and not before time and not after time. Um, so yeah, it is, it was an experiment, you know, it is, it's, exper it's, it's experimental uh, to say the least. I don't think anybody can tell you and can attest to you that it's not in some way experimental. Uh, even if the people who took it were not like the first group that that, that were uh, experimenting with that. Uh, people volunteered to experiment. Um, and yeah, the vax is like a whole other thing. I think that people need to know that there can be complications. Right now we have the third vax and I cannot take it. Like I got to know from my guidance. I still don't have, I, I'm trying to get my menstruation right. And I'm trying to get my body to a level where I can get the yes to get the vaccination because it, I don't, I don't want to not take the vaccination. It's not coming from that place. Um, um, my my approach to medicine is that yes, there are things as vaccination. For example, I did get a yes to the uh, papilloma vaccine vaccination to do that one, and I was scared to do that. But when I got into my guidance and they said you can do that, then I said okay. Um, so I, I might just do it, uh, but not the third one, uh, at least not now. And that means that soon I will not be able to sit at the coffee shop or to enter certain closed places or to be in, um, <clears throat> like belly dancing that I used to do. 
because I uh, am, I don't have the ability to get vaccinated and I'm still not like I'm going to do like an allergy test in November but it's till November and up until then by the end of this month I won't have the green pass and then a lot of places I won't be able to go to so I'm trying to travel as much as I can now uh, so that was an off on topic off topic so that was why I did not suspect the pills but apparently the pills were nearly causing another menstruation because they affect prolactin level which did not excite me too much because I used to take lamotrigine which is something that also affect prolactin levels uh, but I guess that did not affect mine and and I took the, the pills that they gave me was a Frexa or Lanzapine which is something that I did get in 2019 and also I came off of it and then I changed it to Abilify and then I couldn't get I couldn't do with the Abilify either and I was at first when I got the Abilify I was so happy because it was like going through the like two and a half milligrams for a month and then five and then I was like oh I don't have the, the kinesi stuff for you to shake and I was like I'm so happy there's a pill I can take and there's a pill I can take and I was like then I could not sleep it interfered with my sexuality and I was tired all the time and I had to come off that one too and I did not relate it to that because I also had mono monocleosis and uh, CMV which is like the uh, chronic fatigue after I got from the hospital in 2019 so I was like oh that's probably just that but no it was also the pill <laughs> so that was unhappy and what happened is that the, the olanzapine interfered with my sugar levels usually it causes you it just causes you to get fat but this time it just caused me to have sugar drops like hypoglycemia but like drops not straight and I did they did not even get it at hospital because when they check the sugar everything is fine they just gave me a lot of uh, water like injection of uh, fluids and I find myself in a hospital hospital like not like a mental hospital 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 and again the team was so nice and and this is not the given because some of these people work 26 hour shifts which is inhumane and there's actually a demonstration today uh, against that which I cannot physically attend due to my health state of course um, but everyone was really so nice everyone was doing like over the top trying to make me feel better uh, and just like make me laugh or you know mm, keep things fine I was really so impressed I was never at the as far as I remember maybe only when I was a child I was never at the ER like of a hospital hospital uh, as a patient and there is a bureaucracy thing there and my guidance told me that I'm just just worried about it for nothing um, but I did not get like there is I don't know how to say it in English in German it's Krankenkasse and you have to get like a letter from the content cassette that you can go to the hospital hospital the ER and if you don't do that then there's a process and you have to speak with the head of the content cassette because the, the, your family doctor cannot give you uh, that note like in they can all they can only give it in advance they cannot give it afterwards uh, so I'm scared about that because it's like a thousand shekels that I don't have <laughs> literally don't have um, so yeah, uh, but my guidance told me that I'm just worried about it for nothing because that they are supposed to take care of it. Um, so that was how I spent my time at the hospital, feeling very weak. And I took a taxi to there. I was like, I don't know how to take an ambulance. And I was calling my mama, and she said, take a taxi because she she couldn't explain to me, but she kind of felt that. Uh, the taxi can take you all the way to the ER like the ambulance can but the private car cannot so it was actually a smart thing to take a taxi fortunately I had the money um, and I went there they did all the tests that they could do apparently they don't do a lot a lot of tests like they don't even check your uh, your iron level which for me is usually low 
Uh, they told me I was not anemic, but I did have like low hemoglobin and the uh, liver enzymes went up, but they did not find anything about the sugar levels. The sugar was a bit high, but okay. And apparently when you have like sugar drops, then you don't find it at the blood tests. And so they let me out at home and I was still dealing with this crap. <laughs> and I began to eat mainly fruits and veggies, but sometimes also like sweets, like genuine candy, <laughs> hot candy. I feel like a child, um, but I did not suffer from that. And today I had my first Pinot Noir in, I think, a decade, over a decade, because I am not on peels, and fortunately I could take like a glass of red wine, which I could not do when I was taking peels through the whole many years that I was trying to do pills. Um, so that was very exciting for me to just be at the restaurant and use my last days of green pass and, uh, and, and drink a glass of wine. <laughs> That's nice. Um, so yeah, and I'm still dealing with, apparently the, these pills are still in my blood, even though I don't take them anymore and they have to get out of the bloodstream and I'm really, 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 really hoping that they'll get out of the bloodstream already so I'll get better and I hope I won't have these sugar drops anymore. Um, now I have, like with my candies, I hope I can get like to travel tomorrow because as, as long as I have my green pass, which is like up until the end of this month, uh, then I really would love to, you know, try and travel as much as I can. <laughs> Because, uh, and with those little sugary stuff, then I'm more safe from sugar drops and sugar level drops. And, um, yeah, so that's why I have been off and away, um, learning to be moderate and slow down. Oh my gosh, my guidance helps me with that a lot. It's not easy, um, but they do help me um, learning, like for example, right now I can hardly work with essential oils. They will tell me exactly how many drops and stuff that I think are so diluted are not. These essential oils are really, really potent stuff and I've learned to, uh, to channel for me and to channel for a patient and to ask for permission and to know to, to know with the guys like if I'm making a projection or if I'm not making a projection where I'm prescribing something um, so that's like a growth that I've had and I currently do not see patients of course I you know I will not <laughs> I will not put my patients at risk if I'm not in a good energy level if I cannot keep like good stance then I will not put my patients at risk um, and I was thinking when I'll get better to, to even try a job at sales but it sells of the product that I do like that, that does something good for humanity because I was thinking about and my guidance allowed that to try and work with the guidance like whom to call and get the reference like is this company good is this company treating people right is this product good are their ethics correct and then the guidance can help can help with that and if I work as a contractor and not like an employee then I'm like oh that would be really interesting like to to see who does my guidance tell me to call and see how it goes and and maybe make money that way and, in, and this is like a job where I if I cannot see patient at the given moment then I can still do that hopefully and have human contact which I love like nobody likes sales <laughs> uh, but I'm so curious about this experiment and what will it be like and if like yeah and, and in a way that I can make money in a way that nourishes the world and nourishes me um, that's like a dream thingy to do business good like to, to do ethic business to do business in a way that supports the world is something that is really attractive to me aside of the healing uh, profession which I definitely do not put aside I just kind of it's it's okay that I will have like a job that is not just 
um, healing so that when I do do healing I am doing it not from a survival instinct not from a needs based not from chasing clients but from genuinely being able to put myself a bit aside without sacrificing without denouncing my ego and to give the space for people to shine and give them the practical tools that they need to get to learn how to connect with their intuition there's nothing more important to me as a health practitioner that for my patient to to be able to intuit around about themselves because ailment from a holistic perspective is like a sign it's like something that we have that the body tells us that it's like oh you need to grow here you need to grow here if you read Louise Hay's book and I know it's like a cliche thingy but there's a lot to it I literally we have even a psychiatrist in our team of like when I do the practicum and he said, I cannot say it outside, but I was not feeling well. And I read Louise Hay's mantras and I was reading the mantras and I, then I got to feel better. And I'm like, I'm afraid to say it outside to, to my colleagues. They think I went, I went nuts. <laughs> and this is, it was so exciting to me to have like a psychiatrist there. Um, and I also did like, uh, I had a seasick and then there was this sentence that she said like, I am safe and I am, I trust the process of life to bring only good things to me. And I said it a couple of times and I actually began to feel better. And I was like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> Later, I still had to do things like on the material plane for my sickness. But um, but that that is really interesting. It is really nice. I really like it when something work, works also practically and not just an idea. That's why I, I put on hold my thesis studies because I was doing my thesis in uh, philosophy of medicine and like the body-mind question. I was trying to see how do people look at the body-mind question and how what is the epistemic standards that they have. I'm sorry. In English, like how do they know that they know uh, something when they ask themselves what is the answer to the body-mind question. Today, I believe it is a, um, a conglomerate of top-down processes and design processes and emergence. Uh, for example, in Chinese medicine, there is the notion that Shen is like the consciousness uh, the, and the seat of the soul is like the heart and the physical heart. So the, you have to eat well and you have to be physically well uh, to hold your Shen, to hold your spirit. And I know when I had, for example, my sugar level drops, then my guide suddenly went, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know what will be good, we don't know, we try so many things, we don't know, <laughs> we try to save you, it's like we are like the doctors, we don't know. And then when I raised my sugar level, um, then it was like, oh, then, then the spirit could land again and I could go back to communicating with my guides. Um, it was not only that, I don't remember exactly, like, the space was not clear, maybe, I'm not, I'm not sure, but that was like, okay, I was not doing well, and although I will have guidance, I will, I, I, but I keep need to keep asking, like, if, to be very attentive to my body. Definitely what I got from my sugar level drops, atten being attuned to my body. Um, going back to childhood, like, allowing myself to eat candies, and my guides will tell me, like, even if it's a snake or something, or it's, like, snaking, then they will only give me the snake that is, like, the most significant, something that I really liked when I was a child, or something like that. They would only give the most significant. If it's not the most significant, they will say, no, don't take this one. Don't take this one, because they, they have a purpose. Even when they give you cheat meals, they have a purpose um, in those uh, cheat meals. And it's very interesting to see, it's like you study with, and I got the yes from the guidance around it, it's like you study with the mass consciousness of the cosmos. I think I spoke about it yesterday. It's the mass consciousness of the cosmos. It's like a machine learning thingy, but way up higher. And it's still learning. It learns your body. It learns what, who are you? What's good for you? How do you take? It learns you, but it learns you so much more faster than, you know, doctors would and uh and it's so benevolent oh my gosh it's so benevolent uh it's 
yes I got something for example about uh, the Druids and apparently the Phoenix they were doing human sacrifice but they have advanced since like their consciousness have advanced since they're like tell me yes we're doing that but we have learned so much it's not, it's not something that's necessary right now and the Druids apparently they were not doing human sacrifice it's like something that people could tell about the Druids. I don't know if they told about the Druids that they were doing human sacrifice in order to fight against them or if it's just like a myth that spread out. Uh, but the Druids themselves, they were not doing human sacrifices. I don't know about them a lot, but I would probably tell when I do get to learn. I'm still scratching. It's some sort of an allergy. It's not the hygiene thingy and uh, it's some sort of an allergy. I don't know. I'm still... Me and my surroundings, <laughs> still learning uh, to be here. But apparently with the Druids, that there, there's something more and I will learn more about it and I will try to, to tell you because they were, not, um, they were not doing human sacrifice. And they, would, they, they were like, we would have told you if we would do it. We would not lie, like the Phoenix. They told me that they, they, they did that, but they have advanced since. Like, humanity has advanced. There was, like, a rationale to do human sacrifice back then, but this rationale is not longer the rationale right now. I mean, humanity advances, the cosmos advances. And, but specifically, the Druids did not do that. Um, I was told that, for example, the new Druids or the Masonic, or the, they're not, like, evil people. Uh, but I don't know... I, I'm not going to get into societies that are now existing because I don't think it's like it's it's sensitive stuff and it's not in my place um, uh, so yeah that was really interesting um, but you do get into like mass consciousnesses and yeah that moment where I was losing my sugar levels and they were like we don't know we don't know we try to save you my child we don't know we don't know we're like the doctors we tried this we tried that we don't know and they're trying to learn like the world still they're trying to learn the world right now um, but it was very interesting it was very interesting that I got the yes as to doing the um, I think it's HPV uh, vaccine and no for the third uh, vaccine um, of like uh, I think it's still Pfizer um, because they, they, they sort of like and they told me I have like an allergy to penicillin so I will check allergies with, on, in November and I'll see if that is also true in, in, the, in the medicine when it comes to the cosmos or studying the person's chart Sometimes they would give me like a false answer when I when I don't have the access So I told them please tell me you don't have the access don't give me false dates Tell me you don't have the access I can accept it's like they told they learned to say you don't have the access for that Because if I would ask a question I would not have like um, Access or it would not be ethical for me to ask and I forgot to you know forgot myself Then they would usually give me like a wrong answer or something like a, a gaslighting answer and I was like don't do that just tell me you don't have the access I've asked I've only asked for m any magical powers uh, when they are used for good I've only this is what this was my request like I asked only to receive these things if and when I can use them for good uh, and, and in benefit like in, in benefit of the world and so um, so that's like a contract that I made and this is important because you can ask for these things. There's, it's not, you know, the weight is not all on your shoulders. You can ask to say, I only want this power if I can use it for the benefit. It's something that's, that, that you can ask, right? Yes, yeah, you don't have to do a million tests to your own ego. <laughs> They will still give you shadow work. I think I spoke about it previously. They will still give, give you shadow work. Um, but when it's necessary and they will do it in such a way that it was like for example I, I was shown a side of me um, that was less happy <laughs> and they they showed me like yes you have this side of you but it's like you can ask to uh, to bring love to this place let's say bring love to this place where I'm less loving and not act them out 
and I can ask for help. And that is such an empowering placement. And I'm asking, is that accessible to all people? Yes, it's accessible to all people. Ask, ask, ask for help, ask for guidance, ask for these things. Um, there is so much you can do and so much you can achieve with that. Um, so yeah, I, I'm glad I spoke about what, what happened to me. I, I don't want to talk about like the details of what went, what I went through in the psychic, uh, thingy, but, um, I'm glad I spoke about it because I didn't want it to be the thing that I don't speak about or the thing that people ask themselves, what went on between that and that date? Or why did she took these videos out? Or what blah, blah, blah. Um... And I, and I wanted to talk about what it's actually like to, you know, to experience conventional medicine or conventional psychiatric medicine from a down-to-earth perspective and a real and genuine and authentic perspective. That's not like the myth you you may have out there because it's usually very triggering to talk about these things. And uh, at the end of the day. At the end of the day, um, if I can talk and I can explain, uh, I want that to be out there too. So people will have like a demystification of certain things. And it's not complete demystification because other people have other stories. And this is one place, this is just one hospital, and this is one experience of one person. Um, and unfortunately, these things are very difficult to speak about. So if I can then I wanted to demystify that and I don't want that to be like the the black hole of my because it's not <laughs> it's not uh, it's surprising to me that there is no such thing as psychic attack and there is a psychosis and that these are all psychic attacks uh, it's surprising to me uh, and at any case now I cannot treat myself with pills so I have to but I, but I get so much help from the guidance that I feel safe. I feel safe and I feel that I can I can do it. And I know there are some doctors that are going to be very worried, but I much rather have them worried than have me dying from sh blood sugar levels or heart attack or whatnot. Um, I much rather have doctors a bit worried about me than doctors losing me. Um, even if that does not go by what the rules is, and um, and yeah, by by now there are there would be a lot of people who would be very very unhappy if I was not here and it was something that they said that I listened to that caused that, and I wouldn't want to put any any um, health professional in in that stage. So um, that was emotional. <laughs> Uh, I hope to see you in my upcoming videos about intuition development, maybe sexuality. Right now I don't have much of it, but I cannot complain because my life has been full of it and I'll probably be full of it in the future. And I hope to travel tomorrow. If I do, I'll try to, you know, I, I'm, I'm a bit lazy on editing, uh, but I'll try again. Yeah, I do post on social media like on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, so you can follow me there. Um, yeah, bye-bye.